Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to try to get things kicked off. A few of you are still filtering in. Um, I know you're grabbing coffee, grabbing food. Hopefully you're awake for this first morning session. Um, I'm pleased to welcome you to the first presentation of the water reuse track. Uh, for the second year in a row, we're pleased to be a part of the PNCWA conference. And we have dedicated presentations both in 207 this morning, 206A for the middle two sessions, and then 207 in the afternoon. All those presentations are dedicated specifically to water reuse, and we hope you can attend a few of those. Um, reach out to me or others on the board who I'll introduce in a second. Um, but it's great to be a part of this conference and talk a little bit about water reuse in view of the challenges and the means we've had to adapt to things like drought within uh, the Pacific Northwest and the West in general. Um, these last few years have been a lot of adaptation from COVID to supply chain to inflation, things that really affect our everyday lives and also our careers in general. And we've all had to deal with this, whether on the operational level, the engineering level, uh, the program project management level, we've all had a lot of obstacles to overcome. And we've all done a phenomenal job of coming together and dealing with um, some of these items that have challenged us. And I'm pleased that we can be here together to continue talking through some of these things and how we can combat them, and especially things like water reuse for dealing with our water supply. Um, unfortunately, our first presenter um, met one of these challenges. He's not gonna be here today because of an airfare difficulty. He wasn't able to fly in, but thankfully due to technology, we were able to get his presentation recorded late last night. So I'm gonna start with an introduction to what we do as the water reuse uh, board. Um, we are here, I'm actually the, the president for the Pacific Northwest uh, section of the National Water Reuse Association. This is a few of our board members listed up here. Um, a few of them are here in this room. Hopefully you'll get a chance to meet them. Um, if you have questions about joining the Water Reuse Association, have questions associated really with anything your organization or municipality is doing with relationship to water reuse, you can go ahead and reach out to me directly and I can hopefully either answer your question or direct you to somebody who can help you. So uh, thank you to all these wonderful volunteers who help and serve on our board. Uh, they are all volunteers. So really coming together to put this uh, track for water reuse together, they've done a phenomenal job. For our first presentation, Greg Fogel, he is the National Director of uh, Government Affairs and Policy for the Water, Water Reuse Association. He was not able to come today, um, as I mentioned earlier, but he's gonna talk in this upcoming presentation that's been recorded about some of the national level items uh, that relate to water reuse, such as the Infrastructure Investment and Job Acts, uh, the Build America, Buy America, and EPA's water reuse action plan. So just to give you some quick background on Greg before we start the presentation, he joined the Water Reuse Association in 2019 as the Director of Government Affairs and lead the association's federal policy work, including its legislative and regulate, regulatory advocacy program. Before joining water reuse, Greg worked for a decade on agricultural policy issues including issues related to conservation, water quality, and water quantity. Um, Greg is from California and completed his undergraduate degree at UC Berkeley and holds a master's of public policy degree from University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Um, if you have any questions, feel free. I can try to answer them after the presentation, but feel free to email them to me and I can get back to you and follow up with Greg as well. So with that, I will turn it over to our, our tech group and get the presentation started. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg Fogel. I am the Director of Government Affairs and Policy with the Water Reuse Association. I am pleased to be joining you virtually today. Apologize for not being able to be there in person. I ran into um, some issues with my my flights, my travel, uh, but glad to be here with you over the computer. Uh, 
Let me start by providing a, a bit of background about the association, um, what we do, who we are, and then I'll focus in on our work related to federal advocacy and, and federal policies and programs. The Water Reuse Association, for those of you who, who are less familiar with, with us, uh, is the nation's only trade association dedicated to advancing uh, water recycling across the country. We have a range of um, different types of educational um, programming, professional development programming, communications, resources, uh, as well as our annual symposium and our national uh, and state and regional advocacy work. Our membership is pretty um, geographically diverse. We have members in most states across the country. Uh, our, our membership is, is fairly evenly split between utilities, uh, both wastewater and, and water utilities, uh, and private sector companies, water uh, consulting engineering firms and technology firms, other, other companies. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of 220, 230 of each, uh, and then a handful of research institutions and NGOs, um, state regulatory agencies, and, and other other types of organizations. Uh, as you can see here in 2021, we continued to expand. We added 36 new member organizations, a few standing committees, um, and had uh, many folks come forward and volunteer in a range of capacities with the association. Much of our work happens through our state and regional sections. Of course, the Pacific Northwest section made up of Idaho, Oregon, and Washington, is one of our um, most active sections. Um, we were fortunate to add three new sections uh, over the last year or so. Uh, a mid-Atlantic section, also a, a regional section, a South Carolina section, um, and a New Mexico section. Uh, so we were, we were really thrilled to be expanding um, our, our state and regional sections um, in in recent recent times, uh, we do work through our membership um, across the entire country and beyond, um, including states in which we don't have uh, state sections. But the the sections are a fantastic organizing tool, um, as uh, you'll hear a little bit more about from some of our our members at this conference. So today I'm going to focus in on federal programs and policies. I'll give you an overview of, of some of the programs and policies that are relevant to water recycling and then, then zoom in on a, a few key ones that, that we've been working on. Um, this is a, a picture on, on the left side there of uh, Water Week in 2022, our most recent uh, policy, national policy fly-in. We do a national policy fly-in every year in coordination with with some of our water sector association partners um, and we had a, a really great turnout this last year it was our first year back in person uh, since the the pandemic began uh, and we saw several hundred folks come to dc for it so we had some some really great hill meetings um, with with uh, members of congress and their staff um, as well as good meetings with um, folks within the administration um, so for those of you who haven't been out yet to DC for Water Week, I encourage you to, to do that um, in, in coming years. Our 2023 Water Week will happen sometime in late, late April or early May. So be on the lookout for more information on that. So here is a list of some of the programs that relate to um, water recycling, have some some relationship to water recycling. The Environmental Protection Agency administers the bulk of the programs that support water recycling around the country, though the Bureau of Reclamation is the uh, key federal entity supporting water recycling in the West specifically. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is also very involved um, in supporting a whole range of water conservation, 
um, and water quality and, and water quantity oriented programs, um, primarily working with farmers and, and farm communities, but there's a lot of work done through um, the rural util utility service with um, small rural communities as well. Um, and then finally, the Department of Energy um, administers something called the Water Security Grand Challenge, which is funding a lot of work, research work, particularly around desalination and, and water recycling. So within the Environmental Protection Agency portfolio, you know, you have the state revolving fund programs, which are the biggest um, and, and longest standing watt federal water investment programs. Uh, those are those programs are administered by the state. It's a um, a grant that goes to the states, and then they turn that into revol a revolving loan to fund projects at the state level or through the state. Uh, the Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act program, WIFIA, is a loan program that tends to fund very large um, projects, but has done a lot in the in the sp the water recycling space. Um, it's funded some of the most innovative and and largest water recycling projects around the country. Um, and then there's a subset of programs that were authorized <clears throat> through the America's Water Infrastructure Act uh, program, excuse me, Act in um, 2018, uh, also known as WERDA, that includes uh, an advanced water technology grants program, um, some resiliency oriented programs that were later expanded in, in subsequent legislation um, and a few few other smaller programs um, that do support water recycling in, in a range of ways. This last one in the EPA bucket, the Alternative Water Source Grants Pilot Program, I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in an upcoming slide. That's a new grant program that hasn't yet been funded. We're working on that right now, and this has been a major priority for the association over the last couple of years. At the Bureau of Reclamation, there are two programs. One is longstanding, has been around since the early 90s, and the other one is brand new, hasn't yet been rolled out. The first one is the Title 16 uh, grants program. Uh, this is uh, a 25% cost share for water recycling projects. And again, been around for a long time. The Large Scale Water Recycling Projects Program is new. Uh, it is, they're working on um, rolling it out right now, putting together guidance that will lay out some of the details of how it will be implemented. And I'll talk more about these two programs uh, in an upcoming slide. <clears throat> And then I mentioned the Department of Agriculture and, and the Department of Energy. So there's, I think there's a lot of potential in this uh, USDA bucket, um, un untapped potential. We've done some work, for example, the Conservation Innovation Grants Program did prioritize water recycling as a result of, of work that the Water Reuse Association did um, in, in a recent call for proposals. Um, but there's, there's a lot more, I think, that can be done through USDA. Uh, so today I'm going to focus in on on three of these programs. Excuse me. I mentioned uh, all three. The first one that I'll talk a little bit more about is the Title 16 program. Now this program is a, a Western uh, focused program. All of the reclamation programs that I mentioned are limited to the 17 Western states, including uh, the three states that make up the Pacific Northwest region of the Water Reuse Association. Uh, the rest of the country is ineligible for, for these grants. Uh, so you'll see they're under eligible projects. You have to be located in a reclamation state. Uh, you also have to have completed a feasibility study and have that approved by, by the Bureau of Reclamation. And this is true for the large scale program as well. I'll get into that a little bit more in the next slide. In terms of use of funds, funding can be used for planning, design, or construction of eligible projects. They do, there is some statutory language that <clears throat> um, sets priorities, but those priorities are, are pretty broad. There's a lot of flexibility within that. Uh, and then the cost share, as I mentioned, is up to 25%. <clears throat> now, water reuse did succeed. Uh, recently in getting the Bureau of Reclamation to increase this per project cap, funding cap, 
um, from what was $20 million up to $30 million. Uh, so n- now with that change, projects can receive up to 25% or 30 million, whichever is lower. Whereas prior to that change, it was 25% or 20 million, whichever is lower. And we've already seen some water use um, member entities taking advantage of that increased uh, per project funding cap. The next program that I wanted to zoom in on a little bit is the Large Scale Water Recycling Projects Grant Program. Uh, you'll see under eligible entities, it's it's pretty broad. Pretty much any, any water delivery authority or um, group of such authorities. The, uh, the main distinction between this program and the previous one, the Title 16 program, is that in order to qualify for, for the, the large scale recycling projects grant program, projects need to have an estimated cost of at least $500 million. So we're talking about very, very large projects. Um, there are quite a, a few out west that we know of in California, um, southern Nevada, around the Colorado River. Um, there's a lot of work going on to to build very large regional um, projects. Uh, and those are the types of projects we're likely to see applying for this funding. Again, the, the money can be used for the same types of work. And across all of these programs, it the the, the type of project is, you know, has to be a, a water recycling project, but it can be used for planning, design, or or construction. Again, the federal cost share can't exceed twenty five percent. However, with this program, there's no uh, real dollar cap. So, whereas with Title sixteen, it's up to thirty million or twenty five percent, whichever is lower. With the large scale projects program, it's just up to twenty five percent. And then again, prioritization, it's pretty broad, but but they will, the Congress uh, directed uh, reclamation to focus on larger regional, multi-state, and multi-benefit programs, projects, excuse me. <clears throat> the last uh, program I wanted to focus in on is the Alternative Water Source Grants Pilot Program. This is a, uh, a program that we worked to establish last year get authorized and we're still working to to secure funding for the program. I'll I'll get into that um, a little bit more in subsequent slides. So in terms of eligibility, again, state, interstate or interstate water resource development agencies. So utilities, districts, well, excuse me, um, private utilities are eligible here. Uh, the, the most important piece, a well, couple of pieces here are one that the cost share uh, can reach 50%, the federal cost share can can go up to 50% for this program um, compared to 25% for the reclamation program. So a bit more federal cost share. The eligibility criteria, however, is, is somewhat stricter. As you'll see here, eligible projects must be designed to meet existing or reasonably anticipated future water supply needs that cannot be met by existing water supplies as identified in a comprehensive water supply plan or something similar. <clears throat> um, the types of, of uh, projects that this can fund are quite diverse, but that, that's the key restriction there, that they, they want it to be grounded in a, a long-term water supply plan and, and it, it, there needs to be um, some. There needs to be a demonstration of some sort that that uh, these water supply needs cannot be met uh, in other ways. So that that's the main limitation there. Um, and we water reuse um, staff are are working to try to build as much flexibility into that as possible and and get. Um, EPA, I should have mentioned, you know, again, up front that EPA will be administering this program once it, it gets set up. Um, we're urging EPA to to um, be as flexible as possible in administering that language because it is somewhat uh, restrictive if, if interpreted literally. And then the other limitation there 
at the bottom is that projects that have received construction funds through Title 16 are ineligible for this program, the Alternative Water Source Grants Pilot Program. So the entities are eligible to apply for, for this funding regardless of what they've received in the past, but they can't apply for funding for the same project. This was, um, and I think that the intent there was to, to prevent double dipping. Again, most importantly, this is not limited to the Western states. So this would become the first nationwide water recycling program and be available to our members all across the country. So what have we been focusing on in 2022? Well, we have priorities across <clears throat> regulatory uh, development and administrative items that we're working on with the Biden administration, uh, Congress and, and legislative priorities, as well as uh, appropriations priorities, getting the, the dollars for the programs that we authorize. Uh, so in this first bucket, regulatory priorities, <clears throat> The administration is still very much administering the National Water Reuse Action Plan, uh, and that continues to evolve. We continue to play a leading role in helping shape that and, and implement it. I'll talk a little bit more about the Water Reuse Action Plan in, in a, a later slide, uh, but for those who, who might not be aware, this is a national uh, collaborative effort that was launched in February of 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Uh, we we actually had the the, the launch of the draft um, at our September 2019 uh, water reuse symposium in San Diego. So for those of you who were there, you you may remember this session where um, a half dozen or so political appointees from the Trump administration were up on stage and, and launched um, this the draft of this National Water Use Action Plan. And then the following year, we had the the rollout of the the final first iteration of the National Water Use Action Plan. And that included a few dozen actions, multiple federal agencies and many non federal um, partners as well. Um, and that's that's continued to grow. Actions um, are being completed. New actions are being added, and we're we're um, helping to to lead that that effort. Uh, we are also working on issues related to PFAS. This is very much front and center for us, um, as well as Build America by America requirements, um, which were expanded in the recently passed Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act I IJA. Um, on the policy side, uh, we have some work to do still to uh, reauthorize and um, modify the Title 16 program. There are a couple couple things we, we still want to do with that program that we weren't able to do in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, and that's true of the desalination um, grants program as well. Uh, and then We've we've really started to focus in a lot more on what we can do to um, expand water recycling for um, industrial and commercial water users. Um, how can we help support greater reuse in those sectors? And one of the the policy initiatives that we've launched is uh, the an effort to establish new tax incentives to support greater industrial and commercial water reuse. So. There's a lot more work to be done on that, and we're just starting out, but we're, we're very excited about it um, and starting to put, put together policy proposals and make the rounds um, on Capitol Hill with, with folks who might have an interest in that. And then finally, within the appropriations bucket, you know, this appropriations uh, is an annual um, event, an annual campaign. Uh, it it uh, is, it's a process that um, we undergo each year um, throughout the entire year that's going on right now. Um, Congress is in the midst of trying to finalize FY 2023 um, funding levels. Um, and we're working again to, to secure money for, for all of these programs, the programs that I mentioned previously. So one of our biggest um, 
successes last year was enactment of the 2021 Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, IIJA. And within that, we achieved a lot for water recycling. <clears throat> I mentioned some of, some of these programs already. Within the IIJA, we secured a direct appropriation of $1 billion for Western water recycling that was divided uh, between the Title 16 Water Reuse Grants Program, which received $550 million over five years, and the uh, Large Scale Water Recycling Projects Grant Program, which received $450 million over five years. We also uh, secured um, language and funding for desalination uh, grants through the existing Bureau of Reclamation Desalination Program. Uh, and have seen some of that money start to go out the door just in the last couple of months. So about a month ago, Reclamation released the first $310 million for the Title 16 Water Reuse Grants Program of that $550 million. Um, so we were we were thrilled to we were thrilled to see that money go out the door. Nearly all of the um, awardees are water reuse members, uh, and we expect Reclamation to. Uh, to obligate the remaining uh, funding in the next year or two. They made the decision to front load some of that money because they knew demand was there. So um, there's a bigger chunk in the first year than, than there will be in the second or third years. Uh, and then on the large scale water recycling projects program, we expect Reclamation to be issuing guidance in the, the near term, the coming weeks. Uh, laying out how that program will be administered. And then the, the notice of funding opportunity, NOFO, would come shortly thereafter. Continuing with the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, I mentioned the Alternative Water Source Grants Program. We were able to authorize up to $125 million for that program, which again would be the first nationwide water reuse uh, program. Uh, Thus far, funding has not been appropriated for the program. Uh, the, the authorization gives Congress, gives appropriators the ability to provide the funding, but we still have to fight for the funding. So uh, right now in the House, we have $10 million. And in the Senate, we have $5 million uh, appropriated for that program in fiscal year 2023. And we're working right now to get that that number up as high as possible. As a pilot program, we anticipated that it would start small. This is a little smaller than we had hoped. The annual funding authorization is 25 million, so we didn't quite get there, but um, our intention is to grow the, the program over time. So the work between now and the, the end of the year when they finalize this funding package is to get that number up as, as high as possible. And then the IIJA, I think as, as most folks probably know, included uh, roughly $30 billion for the, the Clean and Drinking Water State Revolving Fund programs. That's that's funding for the, the base programs, plus funding, separate funding for contaminants of emerging concern and, and PFAS. Um, water recycling projects are eligible activities within those um, programs, the SRFs. So, be on the lookout from your state for more information about how and when that money is coming out the door and, and be ready if you have a water recycling project and you, you want to go for some of that SRF money. Last slide on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, I believe. Uh, we were able to include language that directs the administration to establish an interagency working group on water reuse uh, to ensure uh, program and policy coordination between federal agencies. So what this is basically is an extension of the National Water Reuse Action uh, Plan um, group of federal agencies, but it's formalized in statute now um, and there's direction to the administration to continue the work. So they, they're they have formally set up an interagency, federal interagency working group on water recycling, um, and they have begun to meet. So we're very excited about this. Um, there's a lot of a lot of um, 
coordination that can be done that hasn't yet been done. Uh, and we're looking forward to participating um, in that work and, and bringing our stakeholders into that process as well. So moving into our final slides here, um, this is shifting gears just slightly. I mentioned the National Water Reuse Action Plan earlier. <clears throat> One of the things that we um, hope the interagency working group and we, we expect the interagency working group on water reuse to focus on is the National Water Reuse Action Plan and, and ushering that process in partnership with the Water Reuse Association. Uh, the work is very much um, underway still. Uh, it's, you know, we're two or more years into this process. Actions are being completed. Um, actions are being added, but there's also this bigger conversation about what the National Water Use Action Plan should look like moving forward. What should its purpose be? How should we really focus in on the um, on the critical path issues and what are those? So that's a it's an interesting time for the National Water Use Action Plan. And if you haven't yet been involved, I encourage you to, to get involved through uh, through the, the Water Reuse Association. Um, we're still doing a lot of work on that. Um, and we're integrating a lot of it into the annual water reuse symposium. I believe this is my last slide or, or close to it. Um, this is just a short list of some emerging issues and, and regulatory issues that have um, taken up a lot of our bandwidth recently and will continue to focus on. Um, PFAS is a big one. Uh, EPA recently issued public health advisories for um, for several um, several PFAS. The, uh, the issue there is that the levels, um, the health advisory levels are so low that you know they're, they're non-detectable really um, with, with current technology and, and science. Um, so you know this is a benchmark. They're supposed to inform the development of maximum contaminant levels in, in drinking water. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, more, perhaps more relevant to water recycling directly is the recent uh, designation of PFOA and PFOS as hazardous sub substances under CERCLA. Um, EPA recently put out a proposed rule to, to do this, to designate these two substances um, as hazardous under CERCLA. If finalized um, as proposed, <clears throat> this would mean that um, any entity that, that discharges PFOA and PFOS uh, at a certain quantity over a certain time uh, would have to notify all relevant um, authorities um, and could potentially be liable for, for cleanup um, of those contaminants. So this is a big deal for, of course, for a lot of utilities. Um, for a lot of our members, um, and we're still, you know, working with the larger community and with EPA to figure out what exactly this would mean um, for utilities uh, and and how to ensure that that the folks receiving PFAS are not on the hook for for remediating the the problem, given that they're not the ones who utilities are not the ones who cause the problem. They're they're receiving the PFAS. Uh, but we're we're definitely keeping a close eye on this one, and we'll be developing comments um, in coordination with our our partners. And then Build America by America requirements, of course, is has gotten a great deal of attention recently. Uh, there are a couple problems. One is that there's an absence of guidance right now, um, which is slowing down the disbursement of funds, particularly um, with respect to the state revolving funds. Um, and then there are inconsistent waiver programs being set up across programs and, uh, and across agencies. You know, we see some agencies and <clears throat> some programs issuing waivers that grandfather in certain types of projects or, or projects that have, have reached a certain um, benchmark. You know, maybe they've begun design or begun planning and then other waivers that don't grandfather in any, any projects, but instead just simply extend the compliance deadline. 
um, and everything in between. So we're, we're working on getting the administration to, to be a little bit more consistent and also make sure that we're not, um, we're not kicking the legs out from under projects that have already begun to plan and design um, based on uh, what existed before these requirements were put into place. With that, I will close. Thank you all again so much for um, for bearing with me through this virtual presentation. I hope you have a, uh, a great time uh, during the rest of your, your conference there. Thank you. Greg wasn't able to join us, but lots of great content on funding and implementation. As the water reuse section, we do a lot. If you're looking into water reuse for the first time, we can help you. Uh, Greg Fogel's con contact information is listed here. Um, I don't know if we have any immediate questions. If you also want to come up uh, right after too, I can I can coordinate with Greg. But did you, did you have something quickly? Yes, I don't know if we have. Uh, this is a question that uh, doesn't really have an answer you can give right now. But okay. Has water reuse looked into any of the factors of health equity and environmental justice uh, when it comes to water reuse, spanning from the inaccessibility from certain older and poor neighborhoods to access rec reclaimed water because of in infrastructure? to making the information about reclaimed water and the use of reclaimed water more accessible, uh, not only to diff people who speak different languages, but people who cannot see or hear. An awful lot of the information is presented visually and orally. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I can give you a very broad answer and then I can maybe follow up with you with a more detailed answer. What I can give you uh, today is our national board is in the process of finalizing a strategic plan. And that goes in with some of our core initiatives is to expand it to communities that are more underserved that may not have quite the funding and to give them those resources to make water reuse available. A lot of times we see water reuse being implemented just for economic reasons in uh, areas that is a lot more, uh, they have the resources to do that or there's a very eminent need. But we, we really, at the end of the day, we wanna make water reuse accessible for everybody. And that's going into our strategic plan. We're still working out some of the details of that. And I can maybe provide you with some of those too in a little, little bit more detailed fashion of where we're going. Yeah, anyone else really quickly? All right, well, thank you all for your attention.